hello Rusty Gang and welcome to the paint shop. In this video we are going to start painting the Italeri kit of the Swiss Air Force FA-18 Hornet in 172 scale. This is the second video of this build and if you want to know everything about the kit and all the conversions I did during the construction, the build of the model, I'll link the video up here and you can check it out so you get the full experience. This is a hashtag JFF chat build. That means just for fun chat, all right? So this build is supposed to be fun. Now let's find out how much fun that we had during this build. So during my short existence, I haven't built many chats yet. So I don't know if I did myself a favor by picking this old Italeri Rebox of the Hornet. But I didn't pick it because of the kit. Of course, I picked it because it comes with Swiss Air Force markings. I'm Swiss and I love aircraft with Swiss Air Force markings or just Swiss markings or aircraft which are built in Switzerland, like any uh, Pilatus aircraft, for instance. So that's why I picked this kit, you know? What's the problem? So in this video, we are going to paint this beauty and at the end, towards the end of the video, I'll show you a, a montage, a short slideshow of the finished build with some photos, all right? Oh yeah, and by the way, if you want to support the video, hit the like button. If you really want to get involved, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell so we reach the 2K subscriber level fast because we have some giveaway prepared that we want to send out to you guys, all right? And if you want to support the channel, you can give me a super thanks. The super thanks is down here. And whatever you post in the comment, I'll pick it up in a future video, all right? Now let's paint this bloody hornet, shall we? I need to say something about this build, all right? Because what started once as a pure fun build now really turned into a fun challenge. So it's the challenge is to still have fun building this kit. It's, yeah, it, on one side, it's, you know, it's an Italian kit from 1996. So, I mean, what it, what was I expecting? But on the other side, it was maybe also because, you know, when you get, when you get like aftermarket stuff, which is not exactly for this kit, you maybe face some problems. And that's what happened here. Exactly what happened here. But luckily this happened because it remembered me what the channel is really about. It's about having fun. All right. So we're still going to have fun. We are not we're, we're not going to let this 1996 Italeri kit spoil our mood. So before we lay down any primer or paint, we're going to clean the model. I really start liking the AK Grey primer. I think the AK primers are, I don't know, they are special. They are different to other primers. Uh, mostly because I think they dry ultra, ultra flat. I haven't seen any product which dries as flat as the AK primer. And I think it's a good thing because it gives some structure to the paint. You know, the paint can really lay down on the surface and stay there. Now with the blue, I did a little pre-shading. I wanted to make it more intense uh, towards the body of the aircraft and a bit less when it goes, you know, at the end of the wings, let's say. So concentrate it towards the body. That was my aim. I used a little uh, burnt umber effect um, just near the uh, exhausts. Yeah. 
So after the pre-shading with colors, I started to lay down, uh, yeah, the pre-shading like with the black panel lines. No, I could care less, bro. This is the Gri, Gri Oscuro Usaf. What the fuck? <laughs> So when everything had fully dried, I started painting the underside. As usually the underside is was single colored, easy thing and uh, always nice, you know, to get, get your groove on painting, get your groove on the airbrush. You start with a single lower side base color. Then the landing gear areas and some other parts, I had to use the satin white. So I masked everything to make sure there's no overspray. And yeah, I told you in, the, in, the, in my last few videos that I'm really into dry brushing and I also did the exhausts with the dry brush technique. The air intakes, I forgot to paint them, so I had to do this. Not a good thing to do. I don't like to uh, spray in there. What I do enjoy is painting the tires. So what you have to do first is take the color that you use for the tires. If you don't have a mask and you have your painted uh, by, your, by hand, then you just take the color, thin it down like it's a wash or something. Then you just use it on the edges around the tires where the tires touch the rims it does the job like a wash and after that you, you, you just use the same color not uh, as thin as before and paint just paint the rest of the tire because then you will have the edges the edges you will have already done by your thin down paint that's a very good very good technique which I really like Time for decals. Now before we start laying down the decals, we have to do a proper gloss coat. Oops, I mounted these pieces already, but now I have to place the decals over it. How I'm gonna do that? I have to cut out the piece from the decals to make it fit. So I use my hobby knife and hope, you know, I get the right, the right part. It worked pretty good. I had to adjust it a bit, but in the end, I was happy with the result. Got to say here that the size of the decals are not always perfect on this kit. You can see it here as well. And uh, yeah, on the other side, I did make a mistake. I thought I'm a hot shot. I don't have to drive it anymore. I just can do it, but it didn't work out. So yeah, I had to recut it and I had a hole in the decal in the end, but I just repainted this quickly. No problem, really. All right, guys, time for another build update. Now you saw me applying the decals. Oops, decals are all in place. They are all done. Um, basically they went down well, basically, but some gave me a few troubles and a few of them were not, didn't have the correct size. Hold on. Let me grab my tool here. For instance, this one here, 
the number is too big. Then this circle decal here is too big as well. Those here around the horizontal stabilizers, they're quite good. The fit is okay. It's not so easy to make them, you know, really fit onto here because those decals are quite thick. They're not really thin. So areas like this took quite a while and the result is not perfect. On top here, there, yeah, it's a little wrinkled and I couldn't get it out. I couldn't get it out. So the decals on the vertical stabilizers were the most time consuming, but the most difficult ones were those two here on the horizontal stabilizers. Because actually that is just, the decal is just this line. Yeah, I mean, in some kits, the entire piece would be a decal, meaning that the middle here would be a decal as well. You, you, we can argue about that because the end result now looks better like this. It's more real because inside here is the paint. There's not a decal over it, like a um, transparent sheet, you know. So we only have the line, but to apply those two, that was difficult. That was difficult. That took me a lot of time. And nerves. So what else we got? Of course, I installed the metal parts here. The small ones here, I couldn't use the metal parts which uh, came with those modifications because they were too short. They ended somewhere around here. So for these two pieces, I used the plastic parts. You can see now here, I'm about to apply the washes. This part here hasn't been cleaned yet. Here on the wing, I only did this line yet. This line yet. Now, yeah, speaking of the panel lines, most most on, on this kit are raised panel lines. There are a few recessed, but most of the panel lines are raised panel lines. It's special. I didn't have that in quite a while. Um, I mean, it's possible also to do a nice panel line wash with, with, with raised panel lines if they're you know, just raised enough. Some of the panel lines don't stand out enough, so it's quite difficult to um, make the paint. I just spotted something here. It's a bit difficult, but it's okay. It's okay. There, it, it won't be the same all over, so maybe that's a good thing. I assembled the uh, resin uh, exhaust nozzles and also already uh, laid a black wash on them. So applying the washes, um, that's the next a bigger step, which I have to finish. After that, it will be a bit dry brushing and uh, just dry brush some of the edges with a metal color. Not too much, just very subtle. I don't wanna have it like very weathered. Now here we have an example of one raised panel line and how I used the PLWs on those. It's just more time consuming, you know. The, the panel line wash will not run across or in the recessed panel line. Yeah, I, I had to kind of tip it in there. Then just a bit of dry brushing. And that's it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did so, please do not forget to like, subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next one. Now, have fun with the montage. Bye bye.